Moscow may in the future start arming Yemen's Houthis with missiles to terrorize the Red Sea. If an agreement is reached, this could work against Russia. The negotiations were reported by Reuters. Sources claim that at least two meetings between the Russians and the Houthis took place in Tehran in 2024. The possibility of transferring Yakont or P-800 Onyx anti-ship missiles to Yemeni militants for striking merchant ships sailing in the Red Sea was discussed. So far, no agreement has been reached, but new talks are expected in the coming weeks. Onyx missiles have a range of up to 300 kilometers and are capable of further worsening the security situation in the Red Sea. The militants may completely control the Bab el Mandeb Strait and the entire southern part of the sea off the coast of Yemen. Transferring missiles to the Houthis will threaten both merchant ships and US and European warships that ensure security in the waters. Experts warn that the appearance of onyxes in Yemen's Houthis could be a shot in the foot for the Kremlin. Ships carrying Russian cargo regularly come under attack from militants in the Red Sea. The loss of this logistics route would hit the Russian economy, which is critically dependent on resource exports. There is a version that negotiations with the Houthis are an element of blackmail by the Kremlin against the West, which is considering lifting restrictions on Ukraine launching missile strikes against Russia's rear. Houthi spokesman Mohammed Abdel Salam denied knowledge of the discussions while U.S. officials have expressed concern to Saudi Arabia and Moscow, Reuters reported. The Saudis are alarmed, we are alarmed, and other regional partners are alarmed. A U.S. official was quoted as saying, emphasizing the potential for the Houthis to escalate disruptions in the Red Sea. In July, the Wall Street Journal, citing U.S. intelligence, reported that Russia might be planning to deliver anti-ship missiles to the Houthis. According to the newspaper, Washington launched a confidential push using an undisclosed third country to stop Russia. It should be noted that the Houthis have been systematically shelling ships in the Red Sea since November last year. In total, over 80 ships have been attacked, two of which were sunk. Ships with Russian cargo and Russian crews are regularly hit. Bloomberg calculated that of all the ships attacked by the Houthis, about 19% were leaving Russian ports. The Houthi terror has affected the movement in the Red Sea. Traffic has fallen by about 60%. Logistics have become more complicated, which has affected the cost of delivery. For the first time in history, China's military has deployed all its aircraft carriers to sea simultaneously. This provides insight into how the China might position its ships in the event of, say, an attack on Taiwan, the Telegraph reports. According to the news agency, over the past weekend, all three Chinese aircraft carriers, the former Soviet Liaoning, its locally produced sister ship, Shandong, and the newest, largest, and most advanced Chinese-made carrier, Fujian were at sea. It is known that Fujian is undergoing trials in the Yellow Sea. Shandong was in the South China Sea west of Taiwan with its escort, while Liaoning and its escort were in the Philippine Sea east of Taiwan. Interestingly, Fujian is not yet officially part of China's military fleet. However, once it joins, China will become the world's second largest aircraft carrier power, surpassing the dual deck Royal Navy and the Indian Navy. Nevertheless, China will still lag behind the U.S. Navy. Moreover, China's carriers are smaller than those of the U.S. Liaoning and Shandong, have a displacement of about 60,000 tons, while Fujian is around 70,000 tons. Their air component is smaller and significantly, only Fujian is equipped with catapults, three of them which can launch J-15 fighters and in the future J-35s at full weight. As the Telegraph notes, the fact that China has deployed three aircraft carriers at once is ominous for Taiwan. In June, it was reported that Taiwan, facing threats from China, planned to conduct military exercises close to actual combat conditions. One of the unique elements of these drills will be nighttime training uncommon for the Taiwanese army. Recently, a documentary series released by Chinese state media has imagined what an invasion of Taiwan by China might look like. The 20-minute sixth episode of Quenching, 
aired by China Central Television, features a nationalistic display of military power, including drone-assisted operations, missile drills and electronic warfare exercises as part of a larger simulated assault on Taiwan's defenses. The episode also opens with a Chinese soldier expressing regret over the ongoing separation between China and Taiwan while yearning for national unification, a recurring theme in Chinese state media. The documentary delves into how the China's People's Liberation Army would use drones and helicopters to move troops to the island. Footage depicts fierce resistance from Taiwan's forces, equipped with portable anti-aircraft missiles similar to those supplied by the United States. On September the 23rd, Japanese F-15 and F-35 fighter jets fired warning missiles at a Russian IL-38 reconnaissance aircraft that violated Japanese airspace, according to the Wall Street Journal. This incident was the first time since 1958 that the Japanese self-defense forces used warning salvos. According to Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshimasa Hayashi, the Russian IL-38 patrol aircraft violated Japanese airspace three times flying over the waters of Rebun Island in the north of the Japanese archipelago. Hayashi added that Japan sent Russia an extremely strong protest in connection with the violation of borders. As the publication notes, the Japanese Air Force twice transmitted warnings to the Russian aircraft demanding that it leave the country's airspace, but warning missiles were fired only after the third intrusion. The publication's journalists asked the Russian Defense Ministry to comment on the situation, but the department did not respond to the request. Observers note that in recent years, Russian military aircraft have increasingly operated near Japanese territory. In this case, the incident occurred against the backdrop of the second stage of the joint Russian-Chinese exercises North Interaction 2024, in which warships of the Russian Federation and the People's Liberation Army of China maneuvered in the Sea of Okhotsk and the Sea of Japan, as well as in the airspace above them. Conducted simultaneously with joint coastal guard and patrol exercises between China and Russia, the military maneuvers of China and Russia once again emphasized the high level of cooperation in the field of security and defense between the two countries, experts said. The Chinese publication Global Times writes in this regard. According to the Japanese government, Russian aircraft violate Japanese airspace more often than others. Moreover, of the 48 recorded violations, 44 were committed by Soviet aircraft. The small island in the Sea of Japan is situated off the northwestern tip of Hokkaido, one of Japan's four main islands, and to the southwest of Russia's Sakhalin Island. To the east of it is the La Parouse Strait, an international waterway known as the Soya Strait. The aerial intrusion came as a total of nine Russian and Chinese warships transited the La Parouse Strait for exercise in the Sea of Okhotsk, situated to the east of the strait on the same day. It was not clear whether the IL-38 was providing support to the joint flotilla.